In August of 2013, uh, Elon Musk uh, proposed a Hyperloop tube as a means of transportation from Southern to Northern California. And I find this to be an interesting idea. I don't know if it's viable or not, but I was just curious how much surface area on the inside of this semi-vacuum tube would have to be kept uh, free of substantial cracks or um, any sort of pressure reestablishing uh, problems. See, the thing is that like this tube is going to have reduced pressures when you pump sucking out the air on the inside of this tube. And uh, I've done some work with low pressure stuff in my graduate work uh, when I was a chemist. And uh, I know it can be kind of tricky to keep the atmospheric pressure, the air that we have around us every day uh, outside of a vessel. So I, I'm going to figure out how much uh, surface area is going to be just based on the um, surface area inside of a cylinder. So to do this, first we have to figure out the length of the tube and also the uh, inner diameter of the tube to figure out how much of that surface area uh, there's going to be. So according to uh, Mr. Musk's proposal, the inner diameter of the tube is going to be 7 feet 4 inches or 2.23 meters. Um, and the length is going to be, let me look that up. So here, uh, the proposal cites that it's going to be about 350 miles long, which is 563 kilometers. So we can use this to idealize a giant tube, a giant cylinder of that length, 300, sorry, uh, 350 miles or 563 kilometers. So this is a very uh, reductionist drawing of Elon Musk's tube and the inner surface area, the inside of this, this uh, cylinder to the other inside of the cylinder, the diameter is 2.23 meters and the length of it is 563,000 meters. And we can use the formula for the um, surface area of a cylinder to figure out how much surface area that is. So that surface area, if you were to somehow unwind this tube and flatten it out, it would look like a giant rectangle with the length of the rectangle just being the height of the cylinder or just that length that we talked about, 563000 meters. And the width of the rectangle of this flattened, rolled out, unrolled um, inner surface area would be the circumference of the circle or just pi d. So the formula for the area of a cylinder um, that doesn't have any tops or bottoms is pi d h and I can substitute the values that we have here and we end up getting this expression and I can calculate. So that's 3,940,000 square meters of inner surface area that needs to not have a lot of cracks in it, not have any sort of like serious fissure or any sort of real disruption that would allow for the atmosphere, you know, air, everyday air that leaks into everything, um, come into that tube. Uh, that's actually 3.94 square kilometers, which is a pretty big area if you think about it. So um, to give you some uh, reference, I think I'll, what I'll do now is calculate the inner surface area of a Schlenk tube which is a common chemistry apparatus that's used to uh, remove atmosphere or gas from uh, different uh, vessels, different like pieces of glassware. So this is the uh, apparatus, like the Wikipedia page for a vacuum gas manifold or what I call a Schlenk tube or a Schlenk line. And you can see here that it has a whole bunch of different stoppers and one of these lines is connected to a vacuum pump and let's see if I can get a close up here. Yeah, so there'd be like a, a vacuum pump that's connected to this tube over here and it actually uh, pulls all, as much gas as it can from the inside of this tube here uh, in the back and 
Um, this whole thing is probably about half a meter long. Um, and that's probably uh, a max of like two centimeters in diameter. So let's figure out how much surface area there is in this, um, in this uh, vacuum tube. Okay, so uh, when I think about my Schlenk tube when I was a graduate student, or the ones that are currently used in practice, um, these things have two centimeters of inner diameter, which is two meters. So this is my approximation. It's going to vary a little bit from Schlenk tube to Schlenk tube, but that's about the right size. And then the length, about half a meter. Again, it varies a little bit from Schlenk tube to Schlenk tube, but a vacuum gas manifold a big one can be as big as like half a meter pretty regularly. And if I was to multiply this out to get the inner surface area of this tube, I would end up getting that it's about uh, 0.031 meters squared. Now, that's a much smaller number than the surface area of Elon Musk's proposed vacuum tube. And I know the difficulty in keeping something below uh, atmospheric pressure. It's, it's very, very difficult because literally every, every point on that surface is being pressured, is being tested for some kind of leak. And people in my uh, discipline spend a lot of time making sure that that shrink tube is actually pulling a decent vacuum. So I'm a little concerned for Mr. Musk and, and his plan, but uh, to give you a hint as to how much larger the surface area is, I can divide the surface area of the proposed hypertube or hyper um, hypertube uh, by the surface area of the Schlenk tube and figure out how much more surface area there is to check and make sure it's working. So the ratio, the number of times larger the surface area of this proposed tube would be than the surface area inside a Schlenk tube is 130 times, 130 million, sorry, times as much. So the amount of aggravation that a inorganic chemist or an air sensitive chemist has over maintaining a vacuum and keeping oxygen and nitrogen away from um, reagents Ha is, is a small fraction, only 130 millionth the amount of aggravation that someone who's in charge of this hypertube making sure it's functioning is going to have. Now, um, I don't think that this is something that, uh, it's not going to be exactly 130 million times as bad because they're going to not require as little, vac as little uh, air pressure. Um, the vacuum that they're pulling doesn't have to be quite as strong but it's still going to be a arduous task to maintain this thing and to keep small fissures and small um, breaks in this tube from uh, leading to air pressure equilibriating with the outside.